Okay, are we getting there? Um, I would start uh, with a very short introduction just to know where we are today. We have uh, the sessions, behavior change that was yesterday, we are responsible and prudent use, and today we will also speak about surveillance and monitoring, private sector engagement, and access to high quality antimicrobials. And I tell this because all this is part of the, of the OI strategy. Uh, I looked, at, you know, the OI is a rather old organization, and it's always interesting to look back. I found that we have a compte rendu, I don't know how to tell this in English, so I will switch a bit to French because it was in French. C'est Office International des Épices aussi. Il y avait une discussion à la session, à la session de l'OIE en 1952 euh, qui était réf fait référence à une autre discussion sur l'antibiorésistance en 1948. Et euh, si vous, je ne sais pas si vous le savez lire, mais le premier, le, un point, c'est que les praticiens ne doivent pas utiliser les antibiotiques au gré de sa fantaisie, mais en suivant des règles qui ont été fixées par l'expérience. Et je pense que ça nous parle toujours, parce qu'aujourd'hui, euh, l'OIE a travaillé sur une stratégie euh, pour essayer de voir comment on peut avancer tous ensemble. Et cette stratégie a été mentionnée un certain nombre de fois. On a quatre objectifs euh, euh, principaux. Et uh, l'objectif uh, sur uh, improve awareness and understanding, I'm going back to English now, uh, that is the, the part uh, that has been covered mostly yesterday. Uh, and I will go through the others one by one. Um, when we come to improve under awareness and understanding, I think that was the session yesterday evening, so I don't need to add anything. I just want uh, to show that one of the points is also speaking about OI guidance, education, and scientific reference material. And there's some more information to come later today on this. And it's a very important point, and that our colleagues are here in the room to collaborate uh, with WHO and FAO, which we have done for some time. And I think this tripartite collaboration now with a new partner has really been uh, instrumental to have common understanding. That was also mentioned by, uh, by Herbert earlier on. If we come to strengthen and knowledge through surveillance and research, uh, we will have a session, and that's what I want to show here. The conference is very much inspired by our strategy. We want to cover and show you where we are on our different objectives. We will have a session on uh, surveillance and monitoring. You will have a presentation uh, avant-première en français, une présentation of the data of the last round of uh, antimicrobial use uh, data collection. What we don't uh, take some minutes to speak about WAHIS. WAHIS, most of you are familiar, that's the World Animal Health Information System that will be renewed and that will help us to get better understanding of the animal production of each of the countries. And that will be important later on, on the way how we can calculate uh, the use of antimicrobials uh, in each of the countries and then on, the, on a global and regional basis. And uh, for sure, we have a session on uh, research in, and uh, on alternatives to antimicrobials tomorrow morning. And we have a panel on public-private partnerships with our colleagues here that comes later today. If we come to support for good governance and capacity building, again, the first point on implementation of national action plans was covered and mentioned by Mathieu yesterday, so I don't go through this anymore. But again, we have all agreed as OI member countries on the Global Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance. Now we have to have a look how we implement this and how each country can implement it. What can the OI do to help what we're doing in the tripartite and how we're monitoring this? And uh, again, you will get in uh, probably next week's a questionnaire asking you to fill it in uh, so that we all uh, have an idea and that we come, come to a global understanding where the needs for the members are to get to the next steps. Uh, the next points will be covered by David just uh, after my talk. Uh, and uh, I want to come back for sure for the training of focal points. How many focal points are in the room? Can you just raise your hands? Yeah, I think that's very nice, <laughs> very nice for us. I think we have a network here with the member countries on a more technical level, how we can really work and advance on a technical level. And for sure, our delegates are the ones that guide us and they make the link between the OIE uh, and, uh, and uh, the member countries. So I think we had uh, an opportunity. I think it's the first time that you could invite delegates and focal points and we are really very glad about that. And the last point, again, will be covered by David. The implementation of the OI standards um, 
that is the topic of the next years. I think we have we are rather done not so rather well with the standards. I think we are quite stable now. We have adapted our list uh, of antimicrobials of veterinary important. Uh, we start to work with uh, multilateral uh, or multisectoral uh, colleagues. That would be uh, also uh, the topic of the next years. How can we do better here? Uh, quality science-based standards, that's our core work. And again, the collaboration that put the photo that we had uh, with our uh, director general and the other two director generals to see how we can work together and how we can make this, this cross-fertilization and, uh, and uh, information um, uh, between the three organizations and now with UNEP as a new partner. I take my last uh, minutes to go uh, a bit deeper in the standards and uh, guidelines that we have because that's our core business and I think that's the foundation of what we are doing. Um, you know that we have uh, uh, updated several of our standards and that we're going to repeat some of the details because I think that's, there was a strong and long discussion at the last general ses uh, session at the OIE, so I think it's worth reminding where we are today. But again, we have com a complete set of standards in the Terrestrial Animal Health Code uh, where we have an introduction, where we have the surveillance and monitoring of resistance, the uh, monitoring of the quality and usage pattern, Responsible and prudent use, yes, the backbone of many things we're doing, and the risk analysis chapter, and we have sort of equivalent in the Aquatic Animal Health Code. Something where we had hard discussions, and I want to go through this in a detail because I think that was important to understand where we are now. We have, after uh, uh, agreement with all member countries, come up with definitions, what is veterinary medical use? And uh, I think it's important to see that uh, within veterinary medical use, we have the treatment, that means administration of antimicrobial agents to an individual or group of animals, and that's probably the specificity of the veterinary sector. Sometimes we have to work with groups. We can't work with individuals for all the species. To control, that's what probably equivalent to metaphylaxis, that's the European uh, term used, means to administer antimicrobial agent to a group of animals containing sick and healthy animals and to prevent, and that's the point that we think that we need to keep in some instances, means to administer antimicrobial agent to an individual or group of animals at risk of acquiring a specific infection. And that means also that prevention is not putting antimicrobials without any veterinary supervision, and there are much more details in the, in the uh, a group uh, in the report of the group that we worked through, what we think is preventive use under veterinary supervision with a target uh, pathogen that you have in mind uh, for a limited time. So prevention is a large expression. I think this creates confusion because it means many things. So we try to fix this. And we also have uh, updated our list of antimicrobial agents uh, with recommendations. I just repeat that we had a recommendation that use of antimicrobial agents uh, in accordance with responsible and prudent use does not include the use for uh, antimicrobial agent as growth promoters. And we have added uh, a second point. The classes in the WHO category of highest priority critically important antimicrobials, that means the highest priority, they should be phased out as more or less immediately because you will see in this latest presentation that we have I think there are some of the antibiotics used for growth promotion that really you can stop this right now. There's no need to use some of these very precious molecules for growth promotion, while it might be more difficult to get rid of all growth promotion. So we have really tried to put the, ac the accent here of immediate action that should be taken by our member countries. Uh, again, that is something we have added with discussion with our colleagues from WHO you know that we already had a, a, a restriction on the use of cephalosporins and the, uh, fluoroquinolones. Uh, we added third and fourth generation of, to be very precise, of cephalosporins. We added the colistin because colistin, while years ago was promoted to be used in animals because it was not used in humans, but now it's used in humans because humans don't have enough antibiotics that work anymore. So this has also been reflected in the use in the animal side. And we have to be aware that changes happen and we have to adapt our, 
our use or our behavior on the veterinary side. So we've added this class uh, to the restriction that we had already had for other molecules. And I think that's a big step in interaction with the, with the human side that we came up to try to make sure that uh, we are following what's happening on the human side, yeah. Again, we also have a chapter. We are just around to update this for the, uh, for the uh, laboratory methods to be used. We will come up, we try to come up with a sort of a table telling what is fit for purpose because it depends what you want to achieve with your surveillance. So that is, please, be, that will be going round for comments. Uh, so please have a look at this if you're interested in this laboratory methods, that's coming. Uh, so, uh, and as a reminder, the backbone for what we are here and what we are doing here is the uh, chapter on responsible and prudent use. It covers really from the beginning, from regulatory authorities to the use, all the steps uh, defines responsibilities. And that's what we tried to translate into the communication material that was presented yesterday by Katrin in a language that is easier to understand. But that's the backbone of the campaign uh, that was presented yesterday uh, from Katrin. So just to summarize the first part, the OI strategy combines uh, the, the foundations or the enabling factors, uh, that's the word that Matthew usually uses, the quality of veterinary services, the need for legislation, education and training, and then to use maybe a word that uh, Sally Davis had used yesterday, antimicrobial uh, res related specific actions that are the standards and guidelines specific to antimicrobial resistance, but we also have the standards and guidelines on the quality of veterinary services. Because if you don't have a good foundation, you can't build anything on it. And we have added here the database of the OIE collection uh, and also the material that is the specific uh, communication campaign. And uh, this foundation part will be presented by David and with this I'm going to hand over to him. Thank you, Elizabeth.